Alright, we are back to Pac-Man and we're almost ready to finish up the game. I can't believe it. We're almost there. We need to do a few more things before we can declare this game done. The first thing that I'm going to take care of is Pac-Man's lives. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a variable for all the sprites and I'm going to make this lives in all caps to denote Pac-Man's lives. And I'm going to add a new script in the Pac-Man sprite starting with when the flag is clicked and the number of lives that Pac-Man will start with let's say is 3 or something like that. So I'm going to set lives to 3. Now when Pac-Man dies this lives variable will decrease. So let me go to the script where it says Pac-Man die. So when I receive Pac-Man die, I'm stopping other scripts, I'm switching the costume to the mouth open, I'm turning around and I'm broadcasting new round. Now I'm going to detach this because we're going to add a few more things. I'm going to add a big if else block. So if the lives of Pac-Man is equal to zero, then I'm going to broadcast a different message. The game will be over at that time. Otherwise, I'm going to simply broadcast a new round. So I'm going to say if lives equals zero, so if lives equals zero, then I'm going to broadcast a new message. So I'm going to broadcast new message, let's say game over. Now, the sprite that's going to control the game over thing and it's going to stop the entire game is going to be the overlay sprite. So I'm going to add a couple more scripts. So when I receive game over, I'm going to switch the costume to game over and I'm going to stop every single thing that's running. So stop all. However, we need to also do a couple more things in this overlay sprite to indicate that Pac-Man has died. So if you remember, this sprite also has a life lost costume. I'm not sure if you see it. Let me bring a show. So notice that the sprite also has a life lost costume. So we need to indicate that. So I'm going to start a script with when I receive Pac-Man die. All right. So I'm going to switch costume to lost life then I'm going to show it on the screen because it's normally hidden I'm also going to force it to the front later because some other sprites might be drawn at that exact position for example the ghost or Pac-Man itself and then I'm going to simply wait for a couple of seconds just for the message to be visible on the screen now, when the round is restarted, so if Pac-Man still has life left, then we will broadcast that new round message, which this sprite doesn't really react to. So I'm going to create another script starting with when I receive new round. So when I receive new round, this script should do the same thing as if the game was originally started as in switch costume to ready and then wait for a couple of seconds then hide from the screen. Which is why I'm going to simply drag these three blocks and I'm going to put them here. Because at the beginning of the game when the flag is clicked, after the sprite broadcasts new round, it's going to receive new round, so it's going to do the same three things. Switch costume to ready, wait for a couple of seconds, then hide. So let me hit the flag now and see what's happening. So space to start and let me just get killed once. Good, so I have life lost and then after two seconds, ready. And then the ghosts start chasing me again. Life lost and let, let me get killed one more time. Life lost and then... How many lives do I still have? Let me... Oh, nobody's decreasing life. All right, that's a bug and we need to address that. So I'm going to go to Pac-Man. So when Pac-Man die, naturally here, before we do this if lives equals zero check, we need to change lives by negative one. So we need to decrease lives by one. So if I hit the flag again, let me get killed a couple of times. Once, then twice. So you see lives is now decreasing. 
Good. So another life lost and then game over. And the game is completely stopped. This is good. Now let's also add lives to Pac-Man. So it's time to program this fruit sprite, which we haven't programmed before. But fortunately, it's pretty easy. I'm going to simply say when flag clicked, I'm going to simply show it on the screen because if Pac-Man eats it, I'm going to hide it. And then I'm simply going to make the sprite go to x equals 0 and y equals 48, which is this point right over here on the screen. And it's also a multiple of 16, so Pac-Man can get it. All right. And then I'm going to simply wait until. So wait until Pac-Man touches me or I touch Pac-Man. So wait until touching Pac-Man. All right. And after Pac-Man has touched me, I will increase lives by one and I will play a little sound. So I'm going to change lives by one. So increase Pac-Man's lives. I'm going to start a little sound. So start sound Pac-Man extra life, which sounds like this, like a siren. All right. And then I'm going to hide it from the screen. When another level starts, I'm going to respawn it back to the original position. So at this point, we've basically implemented Pac-Man's lives. So let's see our fruits in action. I'm going to first eat a power pill because otherwise the ghosts are going to kill me. So I'm setting them on the run. Get out of here. All right. So I've eaten my fruit and my lives have increased. All right. All right. So at this point, we're done with Pac-Man's life. Join me in the next video as we will start thinking about the dots on the maze. This will be a very interesting topic.